hey, it's been a while since we've had a chat. You want some coffee? We're making coffee today because I thought I would reinstate my Coffee with K series, kind of, with a twist. I am actually launching a podcast, and if you are a real homie and you follow me on Instagram, you already know this, but it's called The Curious Dancer, and you can find it on everything. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you listen to things. I wanted to share the content on YouTube as well because I know some people don't like podcasts. Sorry, my dog is like coughing in the background. Basically, this is just gonna be a little chatty series where I talk about things. I will also be interviewing people on the podcast. I have some really great guests lined up and those I will not be sharing on YouTube. So if you wanna hear that, you're gonna have to go listen to the podcast. Mostly because it's not a good video format when I'm interviewing people. Sometimes they're like in their houses and their PJs or like they just don't wanna be put on YouTube. So I'm respecting that and I'm also encouraging you to go listen to the podcast. I'm gonna let this finish. We'll go upstairs and we'll talk. All right, hello everyone. Welcome to today's episode or today's video if you're watching this on YouTube. Basically, I wanted this episode and all of the episodes like this where it's just me to be pretty casual, just like conversational. We're just friends. We're pals sitting in my room talking about dance and life. I don't really have a script for this. I do have like a vague outline of what I want to talk about, but I want it to just kind of flow naturally. What I wanted to talk about on this first episode is the mistakes that I've made as a dancer and it kind of an intro to me who I am and like my dance journey because I realized that I haven't ever really talked about that on this channel. I know I've talked that talked about the fact that I danced in college and a little bit about like my studio life growing up, but it will make more sense as we go forward with this show if you know more about me. So um, if you are a younger dancer, I think this will be a good episode for you so you can learn from some of my mistakes. However, I do want to say there in my mind is no such thing as like a mistake that you regret. Okay, let me explain that. Basically, the way I see it is that anything that you do in life, whether it's a mistake or not, can be taken as a learning experience. And so I don't wanna say that if I could go back in time, I would change all of these things about myself because I think that making mistakes makes you who you are as a person. And I wouldn't be sitting here right now talking about this or have the life that I do today if I hadn't made mistakes in the first place. So I just wanna say that, just remember that it's okay to make mistakes. In fact, that's how you grow and that's what makes life interesting. I have a quote I wanna share with you guys. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I love my inspirational quotes. And this one is from Sophia Loren and it says, mistakes are part of the dues one pays for a full life. And I really love that because it's so true. If you're not making mistakes, your life is just kind of boring, right? You're not taking chances, you're not doing anything to get out of your comfort zone. So if you take away anything from this chat today, it's that it's okay to make mistakes. But that said, there is another quote I want to share with you. It's from Eleanor Roosevelt. She says, learn from the mistakes of others. You can't live long enough to make them all yourself. So that's what I'm trying to kind of do here for you guys today is just allow you to learn from what I maybe did wrong or some of the choices that I made in the past. All right, I'm already rambling a lot. So let's jump into the first point, which is a mistake I made was I didn't put myself out there enough, both in terms of just in class situations and in auditions or as far as like going after opportunities that were presented to me. I didn't audition for things sometimes because I think I was scared of rejection. This was a mistake because I had so much potential that I didn't realize based on this fear. So let me backtrack and explain my dance history growing up. So I started dancing when I was three and I danced at a studio where I lived in California. I did not dance on the competition team. Um, all I did was ballet and point. The only reason I wasn't on the competition team is because I think my parents didn't know that it was a thing 
And I also didn't really know that it was a thing that I should be in. I just knew some of the other girls at my studio were doing it. But my parents like have no dance background. They don't know much about it. And they were pretty busy handling me and my brother growing up. I don't think that they ever like explored what it meant. Or maybe they did and they just didn't want me to compete. I don't know. I don't really know why I didn't. But I grew up dancing at this studio, not doing competition, and I honestly didn't love dance at this point in my life. So this is from when I was like 3 to 11. I went and it was just kind of like another extracurricular activity that I did. I didn't have a lot of friends at the studio just because, I mean, like I wasn't in the competition team and when you're not, competing and having those experiences with people outside of class time, then you don't really have a lot of time to, to socialize, you know? Like when you're in a ballet class, you're not talking to one another, you're just doing your exercises and then you go home. So I think that's one of the reasons I didn't like it is just because it wasn't, there wasn't a lot, enough like social stimulation for me at this point. But so then I moved to Texas when I was 12, 11, I don't know. And I actually told my mom that I didn't want to keep dancing. She she wanted me to like try a class at this ballet studio nearby. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't even like dancing. And I thought this is my time to exit. I moved to a new state. It's time to do something new. But my mom insisted and she said, no, you're going to go try this class at the studio. So I go and I try it and then I end up joining the class and I don't even really remember, it's kind of a blur, but I started to really enjoy dancing. And I think it's because the the class sizes were really small at this studio and it was the first time that I was really, like I really felt like I was getting attention from my teachers because there were not a lot of us and so they were able to just come up and give us corrections. and And also there wasn't a competition team at this studio and so I think at the, the first studio that I was at, they tended to give special treatment to the girls who were dancing on the competition team. And I think it's like that at a lot of places because when you think about it, they want the dancers who are competing to be really good because they want them to win. So they're obviously going to focus more attention on those dancers. As bad as that sounds and as bad as that is, I think that's just the, the situation for a lot of places. I don't know. You guys let me know if that's been your experience at a studio. Now, when I was in Texas at this other place, it was like, no, everyone is going to be treated fairly. Everyone's going to get attention and I really felt like I grew a lot as a dancer because I was actually getting feedback from my teachers and all of that. Now, I enjoyed it, but I still didn't see myself as being that good. I didn't really like see what my potential was. And I actually had a teacher come at one point. She had taught at Joffrey Ballet for a long time. She had danced professionally. She was my ballet teacher. And one day she followed me out after class and she was like, Kayleen, I really think that you should audition for some summer intensive programs because I think it would be really good for you. You would get a lot of really good training out of it and I'm sure you could get accepted into a program. And I was kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll look into it. And I just left and I didn't because I was really scared. I was like, I don't know, I don't think I'm good enough to do ballet in a summer program. Like, what is she talking about? And so I didn't even like bring it up to my parents or anything. I just forgot about it. And then a couple weeks later, the teacher followed me out of class again. And this time she followed me out to like my car where my mom was picking me up. And she started talking to my mom saying like, oh, go to, per- she should audition for Pacific Northwest Ballet's summer intensive, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like standing there thinking, uh, no, I really don't want to because I'm going to look like a fool. I don't think I'm that good. And so then when my mom and I were driving home that day, I don't think, I think I just kind of brushed it off. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want to do that. I don't really think I need it. I think it's expensive too. And I just made excuses basically. And this was just one of the many times I was presented with an opportunity to put myself out there to audition for these training programs. And I didn't think I was good enough to do them or I was just scared that I would go to the audition and look dumb and I didn't want to get that rejection so I just didn't try. So my word of advice to you is put yourself out there especially if someone else sees potential in you. Even if they don't though like go after what you want or at least just try. The worst thing that could happen is they say no like and you're gonna feel sad about that for a day, a week, maybe a couple weeks and then you're gonna forget about it. Like in a year, in five years, in 10 years, 
you're not going to remember how upset you were when you didn't make that uh, summer program or you went to an audition and you didn't make the part, you know? I think it hurts you more to just not try and then be sitting in my position now thinking, wow, I really should have auditioned for more stuff because you never know what I could have gotten. And then another thing about this, not putting myself out there enough, is just in terms of like class settings. So I ended up leaving that studio because it was a little bit too small after a few years. I needed some growth opportunities. So I went to a bigger studio where they really, really focused on ballet. And in this studio, it was pretty competitive. There were a lot of really good girls that were, you know, auditioning and making it um, at these summer intensive programs and going on to dance professionally. And so when I came to these studio, this studio, sorry, I ended up feeling like I had to just stand in the back all the time. I don't know, it just became a thing. I never stood in front. Like I think there were two times that I like volunteered ever to stand in front of these classes because I was just so nervous and I just felt like compared to all these other people, I was not good and like, why would I stand in front? But you know, that's that's so bad for so many reasons. Um, number one is that when you're standing in the back all the time, the teachers can't see you as well. So they're not gonna be giving you feedback. You cannot get better if you're just standing in the back all the time. If they can't see you and give you corrections, then you're just gonna be like staying in the same place. You know what I mean? I mean, like obviously you could probably see yourself in the mirror and make a few corrections here and there, but you need to think about how valuable it is to have people see you and give you corrections. I know getting corrections can be hard on some people. Like you might not like being told that what you did is wrong, but you have to try. You have to put yourself up in front to be visible. And another thing is you just have to realize that yes, you are worthy of standing in front. You deserve to stand in front no matter what level of dance you are in. You deserve to stand up there even if you're gonna mess up and make a mistake. And another thing is you need to not be so scared of making mistakes because you're standing in front. So like I was kind of saying earlier, yes, you might feel a little embarrassed if you make a mistake and that might last five minutes, it might last you the rest of class, depending on how big of a mistake you made. But then a week later, no one's gonna remember. You might not even remember. A year later, definitely no one's gonna remember. Like down the line, no one's gonna remember these little things. I mean, you might, but why does that matter? Like like I said when we started this, this episode, making mistakes is necessary for you to grow and for you, for you to learn. Okay, I'm gonna move on because I feel like I've already like hammered home this message about putting yourself out there enough. But this is sort of related, I guess, um, as far as putting yourself out there. Something that I wish I did more of is that I wish I put myself out there in terms of like socializing with other people in my classes or just in the dance industry in these, these different like events that I went to. So like I said, when I moved to this bigger studio, I never talked to the other girls in my class. Like, I don't know why I was so nervous to talk to them in the hallways because I was like, they're so good and they're already all friends with each other. They're probably gonna think I'm stupid if I come up and try and talk to them. But then when I look back on it or when I think about how I would feel if I were in their shoes, if I were them, I'd probably be like excited that this new girl came up and wanted to talk to me, or I'd at least like entertain the idea of top being friends with her because, you know, I think we put too much power in the hands of other people sometimes and we overthink stuff all the time, or at least I do. I know many people do, but you have to stop thinking like what's gonna go wrong and just think, okay, if I go up and talk to them, the worst thing that's gonna happen is they don't wanna talk to me, but like at least I should try. And nowadays, I definitely think of the world in a more positive light in terms of, I think there are more good people in the world than bad people. There are more people that are gonna be willing to be your friend and be happy to talk to you than there are people who are gonna be mean to you and bully you. So just go for it. Try and make friends because dance is amazing. I love dance and I got through all those years not really socializing that much with people at that studio, but it would have been so much better if I were able to like come into class every day and have my little friends and say hi and socialize between our other classes 
And I just didn't do that. I was just, I was very shy up until like college, honestly. It was really hard for me to make friends. I know it seems weird now that I'm like literally talking to thousands of people on camera or on this podcast, but it, that's really the truth of it. And I want to encourage you guys to push yourselves if you are more introverted to just socialize more. When you b- form these connections with other people, you never know who they know and like what auditions they could get you into or what experiences they might be able to provide to you. And so, I don't know. I just, I really wish that I was a little less shy during those years, but I know how hard it can be. On the flip side of that, I know that being a teenager, being like a young girl, especially in the dance world, it can be really hard to reach out to people. So I totally get where you're coming from if that's something you struggle with, but uh, I encourage you to just spread your wings. Go socialize with people, be a little social butterfly. (laughs) So moving on, let's talk about another thing, and that is I didn't try enough different dance styles until I was a lot older in my dance career, (laughs) which old is very subjective, okay? So like I said, I started dance when I was three, and I was only doing ballet up until I was like 14, and then I did modern, and then I didn't do anything else until I joined my high school dance team. And at that point is when I started doing jazz, palm, hip hop, lots of different styles, clearly. I can't think of all the the styles off the top of my head. And I think part of the reason why I didn't try different styles was because I was, once again, scared of making mistakes. And I didn't like to feel like I didn't know what I was doing, if that makes sense. So, like, if I went into a hip hop class, it just felt so foreign to me because... A lot of times, you know, if you've danced ballet, you you understand that there are a set series of different steps and movements that you can do. Everything has a name to it. Whereas in hip hop, there are so many different variations of hip hop. A lot of the movements don't have names for them. And so if you are coming from a background where you have all of these basically like little puzzle pieces that you're just configuring into different... Um, dances (laughs) like in ballet and then you're going to hip-hop where any kind of movement could go after any other kind of movement it's like really different it just can be scary and I also felt that way with jazz and palm because it was just so brand new to me I would say looking back the sooner that you can start learning different dance styles and just trying them, even if you don't plan on mastering them. Like maybe you don't wanna be a ballroom dancer, but you take a couple ballroom classes every every month. This is just really helpful because it just gets you acquainted with it, you know? And once you start doing it a little bit, it starts to become more familiar and then it's easier for you to keep going. If you just never try or you avoid the dance style because you think you're not gonna be good at it, you are gonna continue to not be good at it, okay? So I actually even remember when I was in high school, I literally asked our director to put me in the back of all of our hip hop dances because I was like, I don't even wanna learn. I know that I'm not good at this, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I was shooting myself in the foot because little did I know I was gonna end up joining my college dance team that next year. And we did a ton of hip hop. So if I had gotten more experience throughout high school, I would have been setting myself up for success. And you know what? Once I got to college and I was sort of forced to do hip hop more often, I started to really like it. I wouldn't say it's my favorite style nowadays at all, but I can still find enjoyment in it because it's not as foreign to me. So I would definitely encourage you to dabble in different dance styles. Don't wait forever to try. Don't be scared of looking dumb. Just go do it. Take beginner classes. It it just makes it easier for you to pick up choreography later on. So definitely try different dance styles. So the last mistake that I want to reflect on here today has to do with my life kind of now. So I've graduated college. Um, I guess I never really finished telling you guys my dance story, but I danced on my dance team in high school and that led to me trying new dance styles like I mentioned and wanting to audition for my college dance team. So I auditioned I made the team and then I danced all four years in college. I was actually a co-captain the last two years as well. Since graduating, I obviously 
don't really have dance in my life the way that it used to be. Like it used to play such a big part of my day-to-day life. And now I work a nine to five job and I have to figure out how to fit dance into that. Something I regret is that I didn't immediately start taking dance classes after graduating. Part of it was because of COVID, but also because I was like just hesitant. I thought that I had lost a lot of my skill and I was gonna be like embarrassed if I went to a dance class and I just looked like I had never danced in my life before. And so I waited like months and months and months after graduating to finally just go take an adult dance class. And I so regret this because you know what I was waiting for was was I wanted to try and improve my dancing at home first before I went to those those classes. And like I said, that was just to protect myself in a sense from being embarrassed at the classes. But what ended up happening, of course, is I didn't get that much better on my own at home. There was finally a point where I had to just say, okay, Kayleen, just sign up for the class, just go, try it out and see how it goes because because I felt like I was kind of just stalling by trying to dance at home and get better and I was like waiting for things to be perfect and finally I just signed up for a class one night I was like I'm gonna go to this beginner ballet class and I'm so glad that I made that choice because once I went to one class I was like oh this is not that bad even though I'm not where I used to be at least I have a teacher in front of me I can see myself improving in the mirror and it just it was just like a whole lot better and just like the environment of being in a dance studio is so different than being at home I would say Don't ever wait to jump into something, whether it's in dance or it's like a project that you wanna do on your own or just like something else that you wanna jump into. Don't wait till things are perfect to start, just start. It's so much better to take action and learn from the mistakes that you make from taking that action rather than waiting for your circumstances and your environment to be exactly where you want them to be. Because in reality, in life, things are never going to be perfect. You're going to be waiting your whole life if you wait for that perfect moment to start something. So if you are interested in taking a dance class or you want to audition for something or whatever it might be, just, just try it. Just go for it. Don't wait for things to be perfect. I don't know that I did a good job of explaining all this stuff today if I was just rambling a lot, but I do hope you enjoyed chatting with me today. I am really excited for you guys to hear the rest of the episodes on the podcast with all these different guests that I'm bringing on. And if you're watching on my YouTube channel right now, I hope that you like having these little chatty videos in between my other content. As always, make sure to give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave me a comment below of what you think about this video style and what you would like me to talk about in the future. And I'll catch you in next week's video. Bye!